with the viaducts in and it looks great, but the rest of it, is it boring? Hi, welcome back to Chadwick Model Railway. I'm Charlie. If you're a regular on this channel, you will have seen me over the last few months put together this viaduct scene and it's kind of almost there. There's a few bit of sort of titillation. I've got a bit of um, board to do blending in with this scenic board here, but fundamentally it's kind of 90% there. And now being in situ, I kind of turned my focus onto the rest of the layout. And during this uh, video, I'm going to show you around, but I also, um, I'm after your opinions on certain aspects of where I go from here. Um, I've looked at certain things and thought perhaps that's not the best way to do it. Um, and I'm not a lover of ripping track up, but it certainly doesn't scare me. At the end of the day, all my track is down with copy decks and it will come up in a matter of minutes. It's just a case of moving point motors around, which let's be perfectly honest, it's not the end of the world. So what I'll do is run you through this layout and run you, uh, give you an insight into the old layout as this layout, as this channel was called, which is Chadwick TMD. And over here behind the camera is the old TMD layout, although it's kind of in bits as this layout will integrate with it. So what I'll do is we'll take it from this corner and have a little look around. I'd appreciate it if you subscribe to my channel. I notice that actually only about 25% of my viewers do. And also, if you click the little bell icon, then you'll get a notification when the next video is released. So as you can see, there are two tracks coming off the viaduct. And they kind of go through this small cutting through this hillside. And when they come out the other side, they split into four main lines running through the station which is between those two platforms. So here's your four main lines running through the platforms. Obviously you've got your main, your fast up and your fast down and also one line for that platform and one line for that platform. Coming back out here on this up line as it comes through there's also a double slip and my idea here is that this double slip will feed into a parcels area and there's also a head shunt for assembling again the, the parcels traffic. Over here there's another point which allows me to use a, a, long, a long siding behind the far platform um, for freight traffic to lay up until the, the main lines are free. And as you can see the, uh, the platforms are reasonably long and in them I can fit um, an eight coach train. Looking up to the far end, I've put in a couple of points with a diamond crossover. And the idea behind that was, um, if you're going to get a local DMU to run into, say, this platform, say, platform one, without going into the far end, because it's going to do a shuttle from this station, which is Chadwick Parkway, into a station that doesn't exist, which is Chadwick Central. So it would come in, cross the main lines, into platform one, and then once it's uh, switched its passengers, then it would then run back into town, hence that crossover. It kind of makes sense. And now right down the far end, we need to convert um, those five lines back into two lines. And clearly I've done this with curved points. I'm not necessarily a lover of curved points, but um, should you have problems, at least these are reasonably accessible. And then moving from those curved points, we come to the old Chadwick via a gap. And if this is the first time you've seen the old Chadwick, there should be a link up here um, to a previous video that shows you how um, the automation, the computerization worked with it. Um, and it was kind of a straightforward layout, really. There was not, not much to it. Um, it's two six foot by three foot boards. And underneath here, there's a piece of first radius curve, which all my locos would go around with the exception of one warship. For some reason, that would only go around in one direction. Um, but as I didn't have any steam locos, there were no problems with the first radius curve. I think these kind of, the fact that, you know, nothing will go around a first radius curve, apparently, by Thomas the Tank Engine, isn't quite true. Anyway, so I built this as an exhibition layout, two six foot by three foot boards to go in the back of an old car. Sadly, the car went and trying to get this to an exhibition would take two trips. And in the end, I thought, no, I'm not prepared to do it. Um, 
I'll have a rethink. And then with this room, I kind of redesigned it um, to have a, a larger tail, tail chaser rather than, than just this one. So I'll show you, uh, talk you through this bit um, so you can see where this is sort of um, originated from. I mentioned there was a first radius curve behind this and then hopefully this will simply lift off and now you can see that first radius curve and I've used the old um, Hornby foam underlay here to make sure that there was no noise generated and every time one of my sound locos went into the tunnel um, the sound would cut off and then it would re uh, would come back on obviously as it came back out. But that's the guts of it. There was a large uh, Backman uh, loco shed there. And as I said, please look at that previous video um, to give you a feel of how this, how this worked. So besides this loco shed area, on the far end of the board up on there on the right hand side, there was a fuel depot that I put in. Um, and obviously I've removed all the back scene and all the um, low relief houses and that's all gone and ripped out the far piece of first radius curve and that blank board right at the far end is going to be another hillside which takes us back to the viaduct. So hopefully that kind of makes sense. I've removed the back scene here, ripped up that track and then those lines that come off the viaduct will sweep into here one line will come into the front, another line will come here to give you your main up and your main down lines. And then the other two will come around here, excuse all this stuff, um, but out to here comes the next board and this then provides a 12 lane fiddle yard behind um, a back scene. So I've got enough trains to trundle around the layout um, to, you know, to feed the station and, and hopefully make it very busy. Or kind of so I thought, really, because um, the fiddle yard here, obviously, you know, a twelve-lane fiddle yard is quite is quite substantial. Um, but then, you know, what's going to go over the top of it over here? Would it just be a straight back scene? Obviously, I can maintain the fiddle yard without any problems because I can just crawl underneath the boards and kind of sort it all out. So that kind of makes it okay. Um, but my worry is about the entertainability. Is that a real word? Not too sure but you know, whether, whether it be enough to keep me going. So what's my problem? Well, I like the viaduct. I spent a great deal of time on it and I've obviously got emotionally involved with it. Um, and it cost a fair bit of, bit of money to, to put together. And uh, as usual, I thank my patrons for helping me. But now I'm left here and I think that this is pretty much sort of two dimensional. It has no real depth. Yes, there's a retaining wall, you know, whoopee and there's a few houses at the back scene, but it's not exciting. Yes, there'll be a footbridge over the front and there'll be a station with a few cars and probably a road scene at the other end, but it's not that exciting. So I thought, well, as there's a, a, a Chadwick Parkway here and a fictitious Chadwick Central, why don't I build a Chadwick Central as a small terminus station? And where will I put that? Well, that's obviously going to go above the fiddle yard. So my thoughts are now that if I rip out some of this stuff, get rid of that, um, that freight siding, which I do like because of it, it's a huge, great big thing. And it would look lovely, a nice big coal train or tanker train going through there. But if I rip that out and convert this area here so that these, the main up and the main down also come off and give me a double track, um, a double track feeding up an incline and then would go right around the far end above all this lot above the old Chadwick TMD and then into a terminus station above that eight track that 12 track fiddle yard and I think that would be pretty good so how do I construct that so working out the distances involved in the kind of steepness of an incline that I'd use I invested in a couple of these woodland scenics uh, incline decline set and this is the 4% uh, and there's a 2, a 2, a 3 and a 4% and obviously this is the steepest and I believe that all mine will go up it. Now when you open, the, if you should buy one of these don't make the same mistake I did because there's an open here tab and all you do is you peel it along and open it up because if you 
use the, uh, the Charlie Bishop strategy of just tearing it to bits, you'll find that you can't actually read the instructions. Um, hey ho, we live and learn. Right, in all seriousness, so I bought this kit. What does it consist of? So it's no surprise then that it's a, a kind of a wiggly piece of polystyrene and it kind of bends round track. It looks pretty good. I think it's quite a sensible design. And hopefully you can see it's got a reasonably gentle rise on it, but it is one in four, which that makes it, if you do uh, hard maths in public, that's a 25% a rise. No, nope. no, it's not. <laughs> I hate maths. It's a one in 25 rise, not a four. It's a 4%, which must make it a fours into a hundred goes four times, it's 25%, yeah. So it's a one in 25 rise, and which is reasonably steep. And now your steam loco, should you invest in this, might not actually be able to get up it. So is it practical? Well, I said that I wanted to get two tracks. Now, I've no idea, and I'm sure you engage people that are watching this can tell me, this might be built for double, a, uh, double track engage because you're certainly not going to get um, double O or HO track on one single set of risers. It just physically isn't, it's, it's physically impossible. Um, and if you've got one of these systems already on your layout and you're into HO or double O and you've got a double track, then please leave a comment because uh, any information I can glean from you before I start hacking all this to bits will be much appreciated. So as I said, I've bought two packs of this, so they'll go parallel, then they'll be too wide. So my kind of, what I envision doing is gluing it all down, getting the track in place and then, um, then trimming the polystyrene back once I've kind of got the, the shape of it. So that's kind of where I am. Um, on top of here, I think I'm going to lay the um, Woodland Scenics foam track bed. So that should lay down there quite sensibly. Um, and it'll appease my obsession about noise and rumble. Um, and it's available in 24 foot lengths, which is 7.31 meters. So, can my stuff get up this? So it's time for a test, and here is a Batman warship, not the most powerful loco you ever saw in the world. And eight coaches, and they're all on the incline bar, that last little bogey. And so all I'll try and do is a dead start on here and see if it gets up. I must confess, I have cleaned the track. These are just bits of gash bits of track that's made up. So hopefully we're going the right way. And that was on speed step one of 126. And then I'll just reverse it. then come back again, again speed step one, and I'm quite happy with that, I think that's worth um, fitting because you know if that's the uh, one of the weakest uh, locos that I've got then things like the westerns and the class 47s I'm sure will just fly up there. Um, I suppose you've got to be careful with uh, the bogies and the linkages because obviously when they come down, obviously the, the coaches will be pushing them down the incline. So this clearly isn't going to be the fastest uh, piece of track before it meets up with the main lines. But hopefully you can see from that that it works. So with the retaining wall that was against the back seam removed and, uh, and there's the incline up against it. I think the only real question is, does it look too steep? And now looking back at the old Chadwick, with the last of the risers up against it, 
you can see that it's only two or three centimetres or perhaps three quarters of an inch away from the level of the original street scene. So if I were to use that level then for Chadwick Central, those arched retaining walls would look pretty good. So hopefully you've enjoyed having a look around and delving into my latest dilemma. Whether you think um, Chadwick Central would be a good idea above the fiddle yard, or perhaps the inclines aren't such a good idea, or they're too steep, or, or whatever you think, let, please let me know in the comments below. I do appreciate it. Um, and especially if you've had um, a double track incline and how you've done it, how you've done your bridges, I'd really like to know. So until next time then, thank my patrons. Don't forget to subscribe, video there and there. Please like, subscribe, thumbs up, share. Catch you later, take care. Thanks, bye-bye.